So let's talk through some new miniature reveals. Games Workshop releases this week, the official reveal of Fugan, and classic Eldari art selling for a whopping 50 grand, with an overview of a bunch of Warhammer news releases and teasers. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, where today I thought I'd cover a whole bunch of minor releases and teasers and reveals. A bunch of things that maybe didn't really need their entire video all to themselves, but nonetheless I found interesting over the week, talking through new stuff from Games Workshop and releases to come. First up, on Warhammer Community they had a couple of model reveals today. One of them was the as expected Fugan miniature, which we saw in the release last night. I'll talk about that in a second, but they also have a Christmas seasonal miniature. As seems to be a tradition, they're releasing one red gobbo per year. And this latest incarnation of him seems to have built himself a rather explosive snowman. I had wondered if they were definitely going to do one of these, given that they released those seasonal rattlings with their turkey and a bunch of other snacks and things. But it seems there's room enough for two sort of seasonal miniatures. I'd say compared with some of the Red Gobbo miniatures in the past, this one's quite a fun one. The reveal maybe feels a little bit on the early side, given that Christmas is still a way off. With Games Workshop miniature reveals, though, it kind of fits their normal timeline, often showing things off around about two to six weeks before they go on sale. And with the Warhammer preview windows, that means that there's a further two weeks delay after that. I feel that like often with their seasonal miniatures like this, they've put them going up to pre-order on mid to late November. So then when you have the two weeks after that, they tend to ship out in early to mid-December time. Compared with their mainstream releases, these are maybe a little bit more on the niche appeal if you want a fun painting project. I quite like the creativity with this one though. The Red Gobbo is basically a slightly odd meme from 40k's past. Sort of a communist Gretchen uprising sort of figure. But then a few years back, they decided that he was basically the Christmas mascot for 40k. So basically you have orcs, revolutions, and Christmas themes all smashed together on one miniature. This version of him has built a snowman who happens to feature the goth rocker's hat. He's got a little accomplice in an elf costume. who seems to be building him a whole bunch of snowballs that have some rather explosive surprises concealed within. I guess for the pricing of it, it'll be somewhere around the sort of 25 to 28 pound mark, or the 40 to 45 dollars sort of mark. As per Games Workshop character kind of miniatures, the other maybe slightly surprising thing about this one is that snowman isn't actually a snowman, but actually a giant bomb in disguise. According to the article, the idea is that you can just not glue the top bit in place and paint the underside of it, and you can basically transform your snowman into a slightly less well-disguised big bomb. Kind of fun to have that little bit of interactivity on a plastic miniature like that. Maybe something they could do a little bit more of for some other armies, perhaps. In any case, if they follow the precedent of previous years, he'll probably get a Legends 40k datasheet at some point, though he won't be any sort of ongoing part of the Orcs range. I think it would be kind of fun if he did get a more permanent model at some stage. Perhaps they did some sort of fun Gretchen release. That's definitely one way that they could expand the Orcs if they wanted to. In any case, otherwise, he'll be added to a whole bunch of past miniatures that he's had. A bunch of red gobbos and one black gobbo hiding in there. I wouldn't be too surprised if there's a few people out there watching who've collected the bunch of them. For this week's Warhammer 40k and Kill Team releases, the biggish box set is the Kill Team starter set, and that's coming alongside a bunch of rebox Kill Teams, plus a bunch of solo release characters for Warhammer 40k in a couple of Chaos Lords and Inquisitor Koti as being released solo. It looks like the Kill Team starter set is priced at the same price as the other Games Workshop starter kits, £67.50 or $112, pretty much what I'd expected. And to me that doesn't feel terrible from an intro box that can play simple games from the go, though you might need the core book for more advanced rules. And this one's the one that's packaged with the intro kill team rules, 7 Space Marines and 7 Death Guard from the Space Marine Hero ranges, plus the battle board and the MDF terrain pieces, a slightly new direction from Games Workshop. People were a bit divided about them, but I feel like it's really not the worst decision in the world if this one's supposed to be the low budget entry set, at least if it stops them charging their normal £90 or $150 or something per set. I was wondering how popular this release would be, so I took a look at that with the aid of a channel poll or two. The answer appears to be more popular than I'd expected. I asked you guys about the popularity of a bunch of upcoming 40k and Kill Team box sets, and it seems that the Kill Team starter set was actually the single most popular, probably at least partly because it's going to be significantly cheaper than the rest. Out of the sample size that I had, it looked like around about 100 people were trying to pick up the starter box. 60 odd said they wanted the Brutal and Cunning one that has the new Rattlings and Tank Busters. If anything, that was a bit of a surprise for me, given that they've got entirely new miniatures that haven't been seen before. I guess maybe some people are looking to pick them up separately though. It also looks like it could be on track to sell more copies than the most popular Christmas Battle Force box set. 
Only around about 63 people said that they wanted to pick up the Dark Angels Inner Circle Task Force, and that was at least fairly surprising to me. That one's certainly a fairly popular box set by 40k standards, even if not every one of the Christmas Battle Forces went down that well. For the miniatures for this one, they're rebox ones from the Space Marine Heroes models. Seven Death Guard with the fun nerdlings on the bases, plus the unique sculpt for the Malignant Plague Caster, and then seven Primaris Marines, including a Heavy Intercessor, Eliminator, and Captain. Out of these two, I thought I'd ask people which half they thought of the box set was the coolest, and it looks like a fairly decisive win for the Death Guard there. To be honest, I'm not really too surprised at all by that one. The Primaris Marines aren't bad, but they don't really do a lot of things that the regular out-of-the-box sets don't do, whereas the Death Guard have a fair few more interesting features with their bunch of pets and nerdlings and things. As ever with Games Workshop's pre-orders and releases, if you were looking to pick something up anyway, and wanted to both support the channel and save money versus the Warhammer web store, I do have a whole bunch of discount retailers links down in the video description. There's Element Games in the UK, plus a few other options for UK ones. They're normally 15% off though, Gap Games for 21% off in Australia, Fenris Workshop for 10% off in Canada, Wargame Portal for 15% off in the USA, and Tash and Geldeep for 16-20% to off in the EU and Germany. A big thank you to anyone who chooses to pick things up via those, it does help to support the channel and keep the videos coming. These are the times that the Kill Team box and the rest will be going on pre-order. It's often midnight Eastern time for Wargame Portal and Fenris Workshop over on North America, 10 or 11 in the UK and Europe and then midday Eastern time in Australia. I don't imagine that there'd be quite such a clamour or sellout for these boxes, though individual stores might sell out of individual products. Otherwise, for this week's releases, there's the Rebox Kill Teams, Kazakin, Pathfinders, Legionaries, Phobos Strike Team, and Inquisitorial Agents, all a little bit depressingly more expensive than they were before due to the inclusion of the cardboard tokens. Probably the Kazakin are the single most relevant of those, as you can't get things anywhere else, though it still looks like we're waiting for a bunch of the others to return, like the Felgor Beastmen, the RBTs, Farstalkers, and Navy Breachers. Finally, for the 40k releases, there's the Chaos Lords and Kotiaz. The Chaos Lords are $42, £26, or €34. Euros. Kotiaz is a little more. Just for another random poll, I asked you guys to rate these all against the Rattling Miniature as well. And it looks like the Chaos Lord on foot wins the battle for the coolest miniature here. And then besides that, it's fairly close between the other two, besides Kotiaz, who is not chosen as their favourite by most people. And then that also looks like that translates equally into sales as well. Out of those miniatures, most people are looking to pick up the Chaos Lord on foot. I guess it doesn't hurt as well that he's also really quite a strong unit in game right now for the Chaos Marines. Then it's the Rattlings and the Chaos Lord with Jump Pack that are the next most popular after that, with not too many people trying to pick up Kotiaz. And I feel like that really does underline that Games Workshop absolutely does lose a whole load of sales if they release a sculpt that's far less well received than others. Moving on from this week's releases though, as mentioned last night we had the leak for Fugan, the Eldar Phoenix Lord who had his instruction manual mailed out in a box of Kyrak Acolytes. As expected, Games Workshop have responded by putting up the images on Warhammer Community. Most of the time when they have major leaks like this, they often tend to show off the miniatures the next day. I guess the article and the video that goes alongside it was, was supposed to come out with the main Eldari release, probably in some sort of reveal show, and maybe even could have featured on the Christmas Day reveals this year. But instead they've decided to just allow it out of the bag early. In general, reception to the Phoenix Lord has been rather good. Not really doing anything too crazily adventurous with him. I guess adding the back banner was rather fun, and the burning Chaos Space Marine skull on the floor. Otherwise, they didn't really give us any more new hints. They said that he'd been recently battling alongside the Inari to thwart the Thousand Suns in the webway. He'd been hunting down demons in the webway ever since, and now seems to be abroad in the galaxy once again. I guess it was quite nice to get a few more full colour shots of different angles. I guess we could already see quite well what the miniature was from the instructions, but nice to see a few more pictures of it. You can see his base a bit better. Plus the back of the miniature, I imagine it probably takes some coordinating to get that fire pipe through doorways though. Must be a bit awkward when he's trying to disembark out of the Falcon Grav tank alongside his squad. For a smaller teaser from earlier in the week, Games Workshop's rumour engine was another one that could easily be 40k. Looks like it's probably either this or Necromunda. Not really too much to go on for this one I don't think. It basically looks like a rack of sort of missiles or bullets, but maybe a slightly weird sort of magazine design. On the community post that I did about it, there were a few suggestions. A lot of people said that it looks superficially similar to the Thousand Suns Hellfire Missile Rack, the one that they get on their Scarab Occult Terminators. I don't know if that's partly due to the angle though, they definitely could have just shot it from an unusual angle and it could be a magazine hanging down. 
Another one I quite liked was the magazine from an old Mordian auto cannon. That one does look pretty similar. I guess we are getting some new death core on the way. I guess I could certainly see this being, say, like an auto cannon magazine for a new heavy weapon team, perhaps. But again, realistically, not all that much to go on. One really quite cool story that was shared with me recently was the seller of this Eldari artwork got in touch with me. Basically showing the fact that there'd been a recent big sale for an Eldar artwork. This one, I believe, is the second edition Codex Eldar cover art done by Jeff Taylor. According to the eBay seller, they bought it from them around about eight years ago, and then basically made their decision to sell recently, and it looks like on eBay it fetched a rather astronomical price of £50,200, so that roughly translates into €60,000 or 65000 American dollars. I guess as Warhammer art goes, it really is quite an iconic piece. Certainly one that I recognise, and no doubt has a whole bunch of massive retro appeal to all sorts of collectors out there. I guess given Warhammer's just continued expanding and expanding in terms of popularity and reach ever since then, I guess a whole bunch of the old artworks and things really are worth quite a lot, genuinely being a pretty cool piece in history in the overall development of the game and hobby. Apparently the piece has been carefully stored behind museum quality glass to preserve it, which totally makes sense if you got something this precious I suppose. Here's a slightly better look at the artwork if you're interested. We've got some very old school and colourful fire dragons, swooping hawks and a dire avenger exarch fighting here. I guess as old school artwork goes it's pretty topical as well, given that we're expecting new models for both fire dragons and swooping hawks in the very near future. Talking of the Space Marine Heroes miniatures earlier in the video that are coming out in that Kill Team box set, it looks like the Warhammer Heroes range is going to be Stormcast focused next, and these ones are the sort of blind buy boxes where you pick up a kit, you don't know which of a whole bunch of miniatures you might get inside, but for Games Workshop model kits they're sort of a really quite small and fairly accessible thing, they don't usually sell many things at the sort of 6 to £8 pounds or $8 sort of price. Almost all their model kits are significantly more than that, even if that would be quite an expensive miniature, at least compared with one out of a 10 model box or something. Kind of interesting that these were originally branded Space Marine Heroes, and we had a wave of Firstborn Space Marines, then Blood Angels and Death Guard following that, and then we had a wave of Primaris Space Marine Heroes, as with the Strike Force Justinian ones, and at that point it was rebranded from Space Marine Heroes to Warhammer Heroes, that seemingly because they wanted to be able to use it for their other settings as well, so it looks like they're giving the option for people to get some individual Stormcast. I believe that these miniatures have been leaked a few months back, but this one I think is the first official reveal for them. Seven fun heroes, each with a little bit of different character to them. I won't pretend that I'm super clued up on Stormcast lore or gameplay from Age of Sigma. I'm sure we could find a few suitable proxies in there for them though, but kind of like Kill Team is for the Primaris Marines and the Death Guard, these ones will have the rules to fill them as a warband in Warcry. One little bit of news that I slipped in here is that there won't be any way to guarantee that you can get the full set of these anymore though. With the previous Space Marine Heroes ranges, they were often sold in packs of eight, and the guarantee is that if you picked up an entire pack of all eight boxes, you would get the seven different miniature sculpts, and then one of them doubled up. Looks like they're not doing with this one anymore, which feels like a bit of a backslide and turns this more into a real sort of loot box type thing. Just not very helpful for people who might want any one miniature out of them, or to guarantee getting the full set without having to go buy lots and lots of copies if they get unlucky. So I guess that's possibly the intention of the sort of loot box type things. In any case, apparently these guys are going on sale in certain retailers in Europe and the US. They don't generally come to Games Workshop's own Warhammer stores and tend to be other places like Target, I think. Apparently they go on sale on Saturday and then come to other places around the world sometime later in the year. Otherwise, for model reveals, there were a few leaks floating around for some Underworld teams. Perhaps the one of which might be of interest to some 40k collectors, are there some new Plaguebearer sculpts out and about? I believe these leaks miniatures came from, I think it was the Ember Guard box manual to my understanding. Again, my focus tends to be more on the 40k side of things as opposed to the fantasy setting. Again, as it often seems to do with leaks, Games Workshop has followed it up with more full pictures of the entire things. I guess they might have been going up to show them off in the not too distant future anyway. It looks like the Plague Bearer warband for the Warhammer Underworlds are called Grandfather's Gardeners. I feel like these could be fun enough to paint up if you had a Nurgle or Chaos Demon army, maybe adding them in as sort of filler miniatures for a Plague Bearer squad to look cool. There's a fair bunch of warped and twisted things here. A lot of them have great big parasitic bugs all sitting all over them. There's some guy with sort of like a seed bag that seems to be made out of his own organs, sowing a whole bunch of maggots in the ground. 
It looks like that guy with the standard at the front has a tick bog thing go all the way through the back of his head and out through his mouth. All sorts of Nurgle nastiness all around, really. Could be of interest to a few Chaos Demon collectors, at least. The other one was for the Seraphon Lizard Men. These ones are the jaws of Itzel. Three main warriors, including one great big one with a great big axe and shield. And as usual with the Underworlds, they've brought their pets along. A base full of swarms with a couple of snakes and a couple of little lizards and a bit of statue too. There's even a tiny frog climbing on top of that. Otherwise, I was interested in looking as to that Underworlds rollout. They announced the new edition of the game in the not-too-distant past, and I feel like I'm always interested to see how Games Workshop treats new editions of their various different systems. One interesting thing that they did this time around was to package a whole bunch of the Underworld warbands together in boxes of four. They're trying to theme them roughly along the lines of the Grand Alliances of Sigmar, so death, destruction, order and chaos, I guess. Kind of interesting to see them packaged that way. They often haven't really tended to do that with skirmish games before, having the individual models as different products. I feel like this maybe does feel like at least a fairly good move, though. I feel like from Games Workshop's point of view, they can far more justify keeping these big boxes around. I guess to be a lot less admin and orders and things, to keep four products on the books as opposed to 16. The warbands are kind of tiny miniature-wise so it may make sense to have a bunch of them clustered together. I would hope at least that this might have some sort of value saving on buying them separately, even if I guess it would be a little bit more irritating to get your hands on any one of the teams, if they're not sold individually at least. I don't know if they'd ever go down this sort of route for Kill Team or something in the future. Otherwise, for their release rollout, it looks at least kind of similar to Kill Team. They had their Ember Guard, Stormcast vs Skaven launch, then I guess the two new warbands this year were those Playbearers and Lizardmen. And then it looks like it'll be a trio more next year. And that feels at least kind of similar to how Kill Team was rolling out recently. They decided to do three releases rather than four in the last year of the previous edition. And their first release after the new edition again was two entirely new bands of miniatures. Maybe they'll follow a similar sort of pattern and go back to the one new kit and one upgrade sprue kit in their future boxes. Finally for one other thing I found interesting, there's a new tower book announced, Elemental Council by Noah Van Noyen. It's just interesting to have more 40k lore content for different races aside from the Imperium, just given that it really makes people have to explore a bit more of the subtleties of what goes on behind the scenes and all the war fronts that sometimes you hear a bit about for some of the armies, but otherwise there's just a fair bit that's just not really been developed too much. In any case, apparently the plot for this one would be cementing control over a newly conquered world, fighting off against an insurgency of Raptors chapter space marines, and apparently some other threats as well. Looked like there was a bit of artwork that might imply Gene Steeler cult, but who knows? Might be of interest to a few followers of the greater good out there at least. In any case though, I'll leave that there for this one. Let me know your thoughts on Games Workshop's new teasers, releases and reveals. What do you make of the new Christmas miniature, the other shots of Fugan and the rest? As mentioned, if you're looking to pick up any of the Kill Team bits, feel free to check out the links down in the video description. The times that they should go live are on screen now. And as always, a big thank you to anyone choosing to support the channel via those. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I'll certainly try and keep up with Games Workshop's news, rumours and releases. And if you'd like to help support the channel, aside from the affiliate links and things, there's also the Patreon page linked down there as well. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing occasional videos early, occasional votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.